and obviously quite a, 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 as we touched on a spacious room for them with, with high ceilings, plenty of ventilation for the horses. How does that, that benefit the horse? Well, hopefully it keeps it healthier. Mm. Um, I mean, these barns are about as close as you can get to living outside, you know. Um, as you can see down at the ends of the barns, there's ventilation out on the sides, windows either side, central, all the way down the roof of the barn. So pretty much, you know, they can have their heads out all year round. How much of a learning curve was this for you as a racing fan who's obviously clued up on the form, likes the occasional bet here and there? How much of an education was it for you, this whole building process? Well, again, there's certain things you just leave to the experts, isn't it? I mean, I enjoyed watching my sort of initial idea grow into something mm. like this. I mean, that we're something that we're really proud of. But at every stage, you try to, you try to, you know, leave the professionals to do what they do. So, I mean, whether it's training the horses, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't try to interfere. Whether it's building a barn, then I've got no expertise. But there's certain things that I do enjoy, um, do quiz Tom about. Um, wherever that might be but that's just m me being inquisitive that's because i you know i'm so in love with the game in many ways and i, I want to learn more all right give me the gossip tom does he get on the phone in the morning go why have you entered this horse there why have we got that <laughs> jockey on is he is he quite hands-on as a as, as a business partner not really um i mean you know i'm left to get on with it um you know that's what i'm here for isn't it um, I mean, obviously, we spend a lot of time chatting. Um, if we go out for lunch in the week or something, you know, he bends me here for a couple of hours about this, that and the other. But um, no, it's not sort of questions why, how, if, but when. You know, it's sort of because he wants to learn and enjoy being part of the team. Has your, obviously, this is a hugely expensive process. Has your love for the sport your, your knowledge of the sport, how has it grown through the years? Well, I'd say it has certainly grown. Um, some people will say when you know a little bit about something, it can be quite dangerous, but I'm keen to stress that really. I mean, as much as I can, even though, you know, I ask Tom questions all the time, it's, it's not, you know, you should be doing this. It's, it's why, why this and why that and how is this and how is that? And, um, and it's purely, you know, because I'm interested, not, it's never, it's never telling Tom how to pick the team. And basically. I mean, Michael has a lot of knowledge, obviously, of how to get himself fit. Hmm. What he's seen at different football clubs, you know, I mean, he's always been an athlete. Yeah. And so if we do things differently, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's nice that he's interested and asks why. And I think one of the first things, you know, that Michael brought into the yard, which I didn't have a clue about, not many people did, was the vibration pad that we've got. Is that, that something that you, you'd used in football throughout your career, or something similar? No, it just come in in the last few years, really. But I mean, there's, there's a lot of little things, isn't there? I mean, I'm really interested in, in the blood samples, mm. the, the lap takes, the, the different you know, uh, scoping that we do. And because I know how I feel when I've got a cold, or I know how I react, or what my blood count should be when I'm at the top of my game. And, you know, that, the scientific little things that I love, you know, why, why, why swim? So what are the benefits of swimming? You know, is it, is it an older horse that's got, you know, bad knees or bad joints or whatever? Or, or how can you keep a, a horse fit in a swimming pool as opposed to a gallop and the, the, the combination of, you know, gallop work and, and swimming? And, and just the whole the scientific a aspect I really like. Heart rate really, monitors. Heart rate and, monitors and things like you that. You know, recovery all. after galloping with, with a heart rate monitor. Which you'd learn throughout your career. Yeah, but, but listen, in the early days when I was playing football, we didn't have any of this blood testing or anything else like that. I mean, it's, uh, it's only come in recently and, and certainly Manchester United was the, was the big eye opener for me. Michael, you're just touching on sort of the benefits of, of swimming, of, of blood samples from your days as a footballer. and You've got quite a high tech swimming pool in place here at Manor House. That's right. This is probably the latest development. Um, you know, it's not essential to train a horse, but it doesn't half help, and, and that's what the place is about, is having the best facilities around, so. I thought it was an electric door, there. It's a horse <laughs> for it. Then you've got pool, spa, walker, and what's down area in here, Tom? Yeah, the heat lamps in the uh, roof there to dry them off after they've swam. But um, this is uh, the spa unit, and this is complete, um, recovery really you know there's no fitness in this 
this is treating problems. The water level can be as high or as low as you like, so you can just treat a foot, you can treat a fat lock, a shin, a knee, anything like that. And uh, we try and get all the horses to actually just go in here so that when they do have a problem, and it's the day before a race, they're ready to be treated, you know? It's not like the first time they've ever been in. How, how often would, would, they, would they come in, say, on a weekly basis, each individual horse? It, it depends. Horse it support. totally depends. I mean, some of the older ones that are a bit sore in places will go in twice a day. Um, but they're all sort of schooled up to a level, so they're not concerned about it. And, and talking about your, edu your education in racing, I suppose elements such as this, processes to aid recovery, uh, to help injuries quickly, uh, heal injuries, you'd have a fairly, well, a very strong understanding of that. I should have had plenty of it. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, mate. From, uh, yeah. from your days as a footballer. But you, but you understand the concept of this and, and how it helps an athlete, a horse. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're all different, aren't we? When I got injured, I didn't want to just lie on the table and say, right, we'll crack on and, and uh, I'll lie here, tell me when I'm fit. I mean, I want to know what you're doing, mm. why you're doing it. Um, not that I'm, you know, being cheeky about it or saying I know better because of course I don't, but I mean, I'm just interested in how the body works. And of course, you know, horses have a very similar um, genetic makeup to, to humans in that, you know, we're both mammals at the end of the day and require the same things to, to produce energy. So something like this ice, well, it, it's the equivalent of our ice bath, really. Um, now we all know when a horse exercises, when people exercise, you break down muscle and, and obviously the cold on the on muscle um, sort of yeah. well repairs it basically yeah. reduces inflammatory and, and all the rest of it but as Tom said things like joints and swellings and things like that then, yeah. then we all know cold therapy is, is very beneficial as you'll appreciate though as well I mean you know as we've touched on earlier training fees aren't cheap no. and anything like this that can get the horse back to the track a bit better or a bit quicker yeah. should effectively save the amount of training fees you're spending. I mean, our job is to get the horses racing. It's not to have them going fast up the gallops. You know? And I think another important part from what <laughs> we're trying to do is that, and what a lot of football clubs are trying to do, it's, it's, it's easy to go and fix, in, in some cases anyway, is to get injured and, and fix it and then come back. But the important thing is prevent, you know, to prevent it in the first place. And, I think with a lot of the things that we've got, whether it be a, a spa, whether the vibe pads, whether it's our, our vet being a, a regular on site and knowing every horse inside out, um, or the staff being trained to pick up um, injuries in, a, in an early stage, it's all preventative um, stuff and that's what we've, we've looked to. So how advanced, I'll ask this to you first, how advanced is the sort of development in technology in terms of horse recovery in racing? from when you started training. And then I'll put the same question to you, Michael, in terms of football, how it's developed through the years as well, but racing first of all. Well, I think that's a bit of a tough one for me, really, because, I mean, I started with Martin Pipe, and I remember, you know, back then, he, um, he had heart rate monitors on horses. Um, we're talking 89. But, um, you know, he was passionate about taking bloods. He had his own lab. But he used to take bloods before, didn't he? Before racing. He used to, I saw an interview with him the other day, and rather than testing a horse before, uh, post race and saying, oh, well, it's scoped badly, etc., etc., he used to do it before to see whether the horse was right going Absolutely. into it. Absolutely, and I mean, of course, that's what everybody does now. But I mean, when I left Martins for 15 years or more after that, you know, you never really saw much technology until I went to Dubai a few years before I started training. Um, and now, I mean, it's, it's vital. I mean, if, if a lactate can tell you two days before that the horse isn't recovering as well as he did when he ran two weeks before, you know, it's a good indication that something isn't right. And in terms of football, just very quickly. Uh, yeah, well, you football, really if you look at football now compared to when I first started, you might have a part-time physio, part-time doctor, right. and the rest would be. And now you look at foot, Premier League football teams, you've got half a dozen sports scientists monitoring everything whether it's your diet whether it's your you know your intensity our hard work rest everything it's the one big change in football is, is sports science so we've seen the spa and we, we know the benefits of the spa what, what does the, the, the we'll pool come this way pool do to well the pool obviously is is fitness as well as um 
you know, treatment, if you like. I mean, it depends why you're swimming a horse. Um, for example, this, this horse in here has had a slight damage to his tendon, so he's not doing any galloping at all. And he's swimming twice a day, every day. And it means that when he's had, if we didn't have the pool, he'd be on box rest or walking exercise. Now, if we give him six weeks swimming, he'll come back and he won't have lost much fitness, which should effectively save the amount of time from injury back to race course. The design of the pool, I've seen a few different styles of design. There's a Japanese very narrow and then they shoot a jet stream into the horse to get them really working their muscles. Was that quite a, a tough decision? Was it something you thought of long and hard as to what style of pool you want? Absolutely, because we knew the area that we had. We knew the size of the building. So then we had to design the best pool we could to get in a horse walker, a spa, and all the other bits and bobs that are in here. And we drove around, obviously, you know, working for Martin Pipe, he had a swimming pool. Um, but we needed to find the right shape to fit the room. Um, and I think we came up with this plan because it's as long as straight as we could get and it gives us the opportunity to take them out and swim them both ways. So they're working exactly the same either side. Bring your towel. I, I wouldn't get in there, it's too cold for me. <laughs> I meant for the horse, I think it's, <clears throat> it's fascinating stuff, I always find it really So he'll, he'll turn round now and come back in and go the opposite way round. And, and what does it do? Does it wear different muscles? It just means that they're working the same, yeah. leading with one leg yeah, each leading. time. Just like you would if you were trotting or galloping a horse, you'd try and do, do the same amount of exercise each way. Do you miss the days when you'd be chucked in the pool to recover after matching? Not really, no. No, I don't. Um, <clears throat> no, I mean, it's... Do you find this, I mean... Is this part of it that, that you find interesting as well, the, sort of the development of your knowledge with the recovery times, etc.? Is that something that...? Yeah, I think the more successful you are, certainly in, in sport and, and in football or wherever it might be, I mean, for argument's sake, Manchester United players are playing every three or four days, and they're not just playing any old game, they're playing at the highest level all the time. So these players, it's... Training, they, they hardly train when they're in season. I mean, it's all about recovery and preparing for the next game. So if we've got a horse that we're wanting to back up pretty soon, um, then things like the, the spa, the swimming pool and whatever, anything to aid recovery is, has got to be, you know, has got to be of paramount importance. So there's so many different uses for a swimming pool or, or for a gallop or whatever you want to, to do, and that's obviously then the trainer's skill to, to try to you know, to, to, to try to sort of impress that on a, on a horse. And there's more as well, because we've got the, the vet's clinic and the vibration pads to look at as well. That's it. Watch the dung heap. <laughs> They're not as polite as the humans. <laughs> they do it in the, uh, in the water. Hey. How often, uh, how often do you weigh horses, Tom? We weigh them every Thursday. Um, they work on a Wednesday, so we weigh them on a Thursday, and then we decide how much more work they need that week. And then we weigh them before and after every race to see how much weight they've lost. So, so what do you, I mean, it's fair, fairly obvious, but what do you as a trainer, what can you determine from weight loss, weight gain, etc.? Well, it all helps to see how they're recovering, doesn't it? I mean, if a horse goes to the races and loses 16 kilos and you want to run it in two days' time, yeah. in that two days, it needs to put on as much of that weight as it can. Um, Unless, of course, it's completely unfit, which is why it's lost so much weight, but then you wouldn't be running back so quickly. Um, but, I mean, it's just another aid, isn't it? It tells you how well they're coping with the volume of work they're giving. Is it very much a case of horses for courses in terms of weight loss after a race, weight loss after travel? Yeah, I mean, it is. Um, and you sort of get a pattern with each horse, don't you, after a while. So if uh, a horse doesn't take a race very well and loses a lot of, of weight after it, you wouldn't be alarmed if you have a, a sort of a graph through exactly. his career? I mean, this is all translated onto computer, exactly that, and it gives you a graph. It's also very useful at the end of the season. If you've run a horse eight times in a year and it always loses 10 kilos and you run it and it loses 20, you know, it's sort of telling you it's probably had enough. One of the most interesting things, from my point of view, that you've got here at Manor House, that I haven't actually seen in, in, in any yard, 
um, is this vibration pad. Tell us about this, Michael. Well, I think it's in, there, there is one more yard, I won't say who it is, but there is one more yard in Britain that's got them. I think they're quite popular in Australia, certainly America as well. And it's something that, that we always used to do at half-time as a team. We always used to have to stand on a vibration plate. And, at and half-time? I'm, yeah, and prior to a game, I'm sure many viewers will, will have uh, been on one in, the, in a gym, in their local gym. But basically, it's, uh, we use it as an aid to... It's a bit like your brain. People say you use 30% of your brain or something. I think science, scientists will tell you muscles are the same. You only use a certain amount of your muscles, and this vibration is... It, you know, it recruits more muscle, so as soon as you jump off that, you feel as if you could jump through the roof, you know, you really... So we used to do it prior to, to, uh, to the first half, second half kicking off. The other benefit that it's, it's said to have is that in young horses, obviously, one problem is, is, uh, is having a shin, is what we, yeah. we obviously call it. Um, now, road walking is something that trainers commonly do, but um, they tell us that, that this is also it improves the bone density of a horse so the, the, the millions of vibrations that it, it you know the, it provides through your leg then it, it incre increases the bone density thus hardening a bone and hopefully giving you less of a, a soft sort of shin splinty shin amateur footballs up and down the land will be getting vibrating machines down <laughs> for half time tom what what are the benefits as a trainer with with a horse who, who comes off or on this machine well i mean we've had it a couple of years and I was slightly skeptical in the beginning um, not knowing really what it was all about but um, we've certainly seen some results from it um, especially lower leg problems uh, a foot problem it's very good for a foot problem it, um, it I don't really know how it works myself um, but it certainly does seem to help harden up bone um, harden up ligaments and and create circulation which I think is why it helps with feet. Was this one of your sort of inputs? Yeah, I suppose so. And obviously, I speak to the vet all the time. I'm really interested in, in the human anatomy and certainly horses as well. And listen, it's, there, there will be papers to say exactly um, what it does, but predominantly we use it for lower limbs and, um, you know, as I say, hardening bones and whatever. And, and Tom, I remember Tom saying after a year of putting it in that. Last year we had X amount of shin problems, um, and, and we had a oh, big decrease have, in the, the following yeah. year. So yeah. I mean, um, yeah, yeah we, you know, it's it's another little. Th I mean, it's a it's a little thing, but hopefully, lots and lots of these little things add up to, to five ten percent in the end, and, and that might make the difference. Is there anything else you're thinking about adding in that? might be advanced in terms of, of other yards, anything like... We won't like tell the, you yeah. <laughs> until, until this, is, this, is, this is a little bit dated now. We've had this three or four years, so we can reveal our secrets now, but <laughs> the next secrets we'll All tell right, you in four years' time when you come We'll be back us, in yeah. four years, yeah, <laughs> to find the, That's the an next. invitation. And then, obviously, next door, we've got our veterinary suite, which is, uh, again, we, uh, we'll, we feel as if it provides us with something a little bit unique that, that not every yard...